Hey, what's going on guys? Screencast this week and hopefully it's going to be a pretty cool screencast. What I wanted to go over were some Linux basics and how to build a really simple project in like the Linux or Unix ecosystem. So this is a little bit niche, but I think it's important to understand. Um, we're just going to start with this video by going over some really, really basic fundamentals inside a Linux or Unix system. If you don't know what these words mean, then this might not be a very good first video for you to watch. So if that's the case, I would just suggest Googling what this means first and then coming back and checking out this video if you're still interested. And if you're a developer watching this video, these words should mean something to you. At least I hope they should mean something to you. All right, so we're gonna first start by taking a pretty quick example of a basic basic executable application that everyone uses in Linux and then we're going to talk about how we might actually build that and organize it in a project. All right, let's just do it. So if you guys just look over to the left here, um, on the left I have a really simple terminal open up to a Linux computer that I own or manage. It's just like my website and I'm just using it as an example for this video to show you guys uh, a really popular executable. So one of the most popular executables out there is this thing called LST, list. And there's no way you can use this operating system without knowing this command. What this pretty much does is just list your current directory structure and files. Uh, you can pass it some options and make it do different things. It's really cool. And let's just take a deeper dive at what this uh, really means. So if we type which ls this is actually where ls is coming from inside this directory slash bin slash ls so if we go into bin we can actually see where ls is coming from sorry we can actually see that inside this directory is where this executable lies so um, there's also a lot of other stuff in here i'm actually using ls to list the binaries in this directory and you actually where is it it's right here. See, ls amongst a, a lot of other things. What the green means is that these files are actually executable files. And remember, um, I'm not sure if you guys had a chance to watch my other video, but remember, an executable file is something that we can actually execute and run, whereas a library file, or a library rather, cannot be executed. And those are two fundamental, really different types of files you encounter inside these systems. You'll encounter a lot of different libraries and a lot of different executables which are dependent on those libraries. So ls is an executable and what it does is list the directory structure. So I hope that's pretty clear. Okay, so I hope binaries are pretty clear and I just want everyone to take a quick note at these words. Really pay attention to this word, bin, does mean binary and everything inside bin directories are going to be binaries that you can execute. All right, so I hope that's clear and let's just talk quickly about libraries now. So there's a cool command I'm going to show you guys right now. Oops. So LDD, what this shows is libraries that LS depends upon. So remember, I'm not sure if you guys got a chance to watch my static versus shared libraries video and definitely check that out if you didn't this will make more sense but all executables are dependent on various libraries and this is a cool command that lists out various libraries that ls pretty much needs and i just want to point out that check out there's a lot of random stuff going on here but just check out where these libraries exist they all exist under this lib or library directory and these are real files like these exist somewhere they're not they're pointing to real things. So if all executables live inside slash bin, you can also say that all libraries are gonna live under slash lib directories. Okay, so this is a really important note and it's gonna be a theme in this video and we're always gonna distinguish executable files versus library files, right? And they always appear inside these two separate directories and obviously the naming is really deliberate. I can't really talk about it much further, but let's just move on. So this is a really cool command, LDD. 
if you guys have some time, just check it out. Okay, so if you check out um, a lot of different binaries inside this directory, ls is just one of many, and also my computer is quite simple. So this is a really, really small list of potential binaries that live in, inside this system. But remember guys, every single one of these developers wrote them. Every single one of these binaries, date, mk, temp, pwd, these are all binaries written by people and they originated from a project. So everything came from somewhere. Everything was built from a project with source code. And sorry, I'll fix this formatting, but I'll probably hide this video soon, but I just want everyone to remember that this all came from somewhere and it all came from some project at some point in time by some developers. And what we're gonna talk about now, now that we kind of understand this thing on the left, and we just did a really quick overview of this and there's much more to talk about, but let's just talk about what the project might look like to even build something like this. Like, what would the project even need inside it to create LS, for example? And that's what we're gonna talk about now. All right, so let's just do that. All right, first question, let's just say, let's build LS. So we'll talk through a simple example of what we might set up to actually build the LS command, list command. And first we have to ask ourselves, what exactly are we building? And is it a executable library or maybe both? So this is the first question you have to ask yourselves really. So inside this ecosystem, what do we want to build? Do we want to build an executable, like a command here? Do we want to build the library, which is purely maybe just a set of cool functionality that other developers might use? Like we don't even have an executable. We could also just build the library. That's totally doable. And finally, you could do a combination of the both. So let's actually do a combination. Let's just make a cool like kind of LS project, I'll call it LS project. And what this project is gonna do, it's gonna build an LS library as well as the LS command. And let's just talk through what that means and how we're gonna do it. Let me just move this down a little bit. Okay, so first I'll lay out the rough big picture items inside this project and then we'll break it down one by one, but I'm gonna list them all down here first. So. This will be a little quick, but we'll come back to each one of these. So there's going to be a source, source code directory. There's going to be a testing directory. There's going to be a build directory, include. There's going to be third party. What else is there? There's going to be artifacts. I think that might do it. Okay, let's just go over these six first, talk through them, and see where that gets us. All right, so first thing, remember, we're trying to build both. We're going to build LS plus we're going to build some kind of LS libraries that people can use. Um, if you don't know these extensions, these are library extensions. But the project itself, the purpose of our project, in the end, when we do like something like build this project, it's going to give us an executable as well as two libraries. So I hope that's clear. This is the goal of this project and let's see how we can just lay it out with this kind of structure and what do these funky words mean. Okay, first thing, of course, the most important thing is the source code directory. Not much to say here and we're just gonna do a little bit of namespacing. We're gonna have source code for our library as well as source code for the actual executable binary too, right? We're just kind of separating it out. It all falls under source code, but source code for library versus, versus source code for binary. Hope that's clear. So the library, we'll just call it libls, and this is like all cool stuff, um, ls core functions. So pretty much here, the library of ls is probably where the really, really core functionality is gonna lie. Um, and this will hold all relevant source files. Um, let's just assume this is a C++ project. It's gonna hold all relevant source files to build this library. All right, so now let's look at the binary. And obviously we already know what the binary is gonna be called. The binary 
is called ls. And like you guys know it, we always type ls, so the binary is called ls. And this is going to be a little different than the library source files. Remember, binaries have to be executable, so they have to have a main function. Uh, if you don't know what a main function is, it's just like this is kind of like C or C++ 101, but any type of executable needs a main. So pretty much the main is going to be pretty simple here. It's just going to be maybe handle some basic parameters. Like, you know, you can pass in flags to ls, takes in various flags, handles basic parameters, and calls into the library. Because most of the goodies are going to be up here in the core library of ls, the executable itself is pretty much just a sh little wrapper on top of this. So it might handle some basic user parameters, but in the end, it just calls into the library. So all the guts and the source code is going to be in this directory. Let's move on. Okay, so next major part of any project is a test directory. Of course, you're going to want to test your code. It's not only source files. It's also going to be some testing files and Normally, you'd always namespace this a little similarly. You don't have to do this, but I usually like doing this. You namespace it a little similarly to your source directory, so you actually know exactly what you're going to test. And if the library is here, we're going to have some test for the library down here. And the test is also going to consist of various files here. And one important thing to know is that the test itself is going to be an executable file. So there has to be a main executable file along with these tests because remember, we actually have to run the test. The test eventually, once this thing is built, it's going to run and it's going to say good or bad. The test is not a library. So the test itself is testing the library up here. But what you guys have to realize is all unit tests that you build or any test in the system, they're all executable files and they need a main okay so this project is pretty simple we'll have a couple tests that's going to test our core library all these good ls core functions and all that source code for the test is going to um, exist inside this test directory all right hope that's clear let's just keep moving on the next directory that's um this is actually a temporary di directory let's just talk about it real quick this is the build directory and what the build directory usually holds is temporary building files. Um, and this is kind of pervasive to any language, but if you guys have done C or C++ before, you know that all these source files will get translated to object files. So these .o or object files are an example of temporary build files that you don't write. These are generated by the compilation or the build system. And usually you want to place all temporary build files inside a special directory because you know they're temporary. And when people talk about clean, when someone cleans a build, what that really means is you kind of remove all temporary files. So for if we were to clean this project in particular, it might just remove all files inside this directory. So you always need a directory like this and it holds all the you know, intermittent files that are coming and going, getting auto-generated for you by the system. So that all goes under here. Okay, actually, I want to talk about third party first before I talk about include directory, because I think that ordering makes more sense. So we'll talk about third party, then include, and then artifacts. I'm actually running out of time. I still have this 15 minute cap to this video. So I'm just going to make a part two while I'm at it. And hopefully it's not too disjoint, but I'm going to stop the video now. I'm going to start a fresh part two of the same exact topic and I'll finish up the discussion there. All right, guys. So I'll see you in that next video if you're still sticking around. All right. Later.